now we're going to shoot a quick video on how to calculate stream gradient in the field. So we're still here at our Woolman location. Since you do two Woolmans per reach, we also look for two gradients per reach. And since your Woolman was a typical fast water unit, the gradient can also be shot at this typical fast water unit and then recorded on the Woolman data sheet in the box in which we showed in the previous video. So basically what we're looking for is an area that is typical gradient of the survey you've been on so far. And we found an area that looks pretty average for us for what we've seen throughout our survey. And then next what we're doing is we're placing two people 100 feet apart, if you can. If you cannot place somebody 100 feet apart, you can shoot a 50 foot length upstream and then a 50 foot length downstream in order to get your 100 foot length requirement, which you will see on very brushy streams and very sinuous, lots of meandering type streams can be hard to get in 100 feet actually with a line of sight. But luckily we have a long fast here so we can do 100 feet. And we have our observer up there at 100 feet away from our other one here. And what we have done is we have come to a conclusion on what height we want to shoot. So we have established that we want to do four feet on our waiting rod. And then this, so then we have our person up here with their hand held right at the four foot line. And the other key component here is getting your waiting rod right at the water surface. We're actually shooting the gradient of the water surface itself. So our person upstream has their rod sitting on a rock right at the water surface. And down here we found another perfectly height rock right at the water surface to set our actual rod on to make sure that we are both at four feet at the water surface. And next what we're going to do, we're going to take our handy abney level and we're going to hold that right at that four foot mark. And then John's going to peer through the eyesight and he's going to use the level bubble in there and get it perfectly in line with the line against the level bubble within his eye viewfinder which he's also lining up with the hand of the person upstream. So we basically want the line in the viewfinder in line with the person's hand upstream and with also the line going right through the bubble seen in the actual Abney level. And so John just shot that up there. He turned the dial here to make it so that that bubble was actually centered in the line and the hand. And it's hard to read. These increments are very small, but as you can see, we are a bit off of zero. So we're at about two and a half right there. And so that is what we would actually record on our Woolman data sheet. And if you are so fortunate that your forest has a range finder, this is another useful tool you can use real quick to shoot it. Again, we're going to hold the, eye, the viewfinder for your eye right at four feet, and then he's going to line it up perfectly centered with the person's hand upstream 100 feet away, and he's going to hit his measure button. And then as we see here, luckily with ours, we have a side display. We see we're shooting at least a hundred, over 100 feet upstream. And then in this display, we have a 0.8 and it's showing a degree. We actually have a rise over our run and then our percent, I mean our degrees of slope, whereas the Abney level had a percent of slope. Either way is fine to record. Just make sure that when you are recording it, you actually write down what unit of measure you are using. And you'll be expected to do those at each Woolman site.